The officers who shot and killed a man in a San Francisco barber shop have been identified. They are Kevin Endo and Tess Casey. Uh, both work in the police department's field operations bureau. A body cam video from March 21st shows the suspect confronting an officer inside a barber shop before shooting him in the leg. Police say Jihad Eid fired nine shots. The two officers returned fire, hitting him approximately 18 times. Uh, four employees at the barber shop were wounded in the crossfire. And joining us now to talk more about the legal aspect, about what justifies a police shooting and what could lead to criminal charges, is San Mateo District Attorney and former president of the District Attorney's Association of California, Steve Wagstaff. Good morning. What is the line between a justifiable shooting and charges being filed? Whether the action of the officer was reasonable under the circumstances. Did the officer reasonably fear for that his life was in danger or he could suffer great bodily injury? What is the definition of reasonable? If you have situations where someone turns out to be unarmed, that you were pursuing, as in this, the case in Sacramento, or these others where we've seen, where there's questions raised, uh, the uh, shooting here in San Francisco, a uh, man who was, had a knife, does not appeal to be attacking anyone at that moment. Is that considered reasonable? It will depend on what the officers reasonably felt at the time. The United States Supreme Court said, don't look as Monday morning quarterback. Look what the reasonable police officer would have believed at the time. If it wasn't reasonable to think that their life was in danger or they, uh, they could suffer great bodily injury, that's not reasonable, that's not justifiable. Okay, if there is, if you and I were involved in a shooting like some of these, the district attorney might say you there wasn't any reasonable. It wasn't reasonable. You you didn't see a gun going in to, as you were chasing him. There weren't shots fired. Uh, you just reacted. Uh, we might be charged. Why aren't? Police officers charged? Because most of the time, there's two components. Number one, what does the DA believe? And then number two, what will 12 citizens do on a jury? And very often, because citizens and throughout most of the state will give the benefit of a doubt to an, a law enforcement officer, they're not provable. But when the DA believes that it is and a jury will find it, well, then our job's to file charges. We just don't encounter many of those in California. Okay, in the case of Mario Woods here, the district attorney has been investigating that, what, for going on two years now. What are some of the pros and cons of something that people watch and go, why did you do that? The question will be is, was it this person with the, the edged instrument, the knife, was it necessary for the officers to take the action that they did? That's the whole question. Okay, so let's take the, the, the Stefan uh, Cook situation in Sacramento. They're pursuing them. Now, that's different between you and I. You and I don't have the right to go after somebody, right? That's right. But law enforcement is expected to pursue you if you're breaking the law, right? Right. Now, they wind up in the backyard. And shots, many, many shots are fired. Now, there's also a question about the reasonableness of that. Do you need to put 20 or 8 shots into somebody? Right. Well, the whole, that really isn't the, the key question. The question really? is whether lethal force was used at all. Now, whether it was appropriate or not, that's going to be a factor, but that's not the key thing. Well, under the police guidelines, the use of lethal force, they're trained to use lethal force. They're not they're trained to shoot to wound. They're trained to shoot to kill, correct? Throughout the entire country, yes. So that makes them different than us as well because they are going to put 20 bullets in. They're going to shoot until the, ob the target is disabled. That's how long they is have the right to shoot. Is that reasonable? That's, you know what, that is a judgment. But under the law, is if you fire one shot that kills somebody, it doesn't matter whether it's one or 20. The use of the force is judged by the, what the officer reasonably feared. Okay, so, but the use of force, there are no limits on the use of force then. In that situation, in that circumstance, an officer has the right to fire until it is no longer reasonable to shoot when the when the target is no longer a danger. What do you do in a situation if an autopsy report shows that they were shot in the back? Well, that will you know what? There's a lot of science on that uh, force science that will tell you that. Uh, in the back, very often, what's the fear if somebody's running? That's the natural reaction for everybody. But the, the issue is, when the first shot is fired, is the person already turning? Remember, there's a two-second uh, reaction time for human beings. And so the person may, when the officer may be facing the officer, if he's turning, that's one explanation. The other is, you just can't shoot somebody in the back if they're running from you. Okay. The... California, I was looking back, and I can't find the last time a police officer was charged criminally. For the use of lethal force? We've had some yeah. uh, DA investigators and other agents, but not a police. Why do you think that is? You know, I think a big part of it is a uh, combination. Officers are trained very well, and they don't want to use a gun. That's the people think that these are all, you know, Clint Eastwood in the old movie. They're not. I've just, we've had multiple officers in our county who've been involved in fatal shootings. 
they don't come back. They retire. It's upsetting. So they don't want to do it. That's a basic thing. So most of the shootings we encounter, that's it. Now remember, when the DA is making a judgment, the DA is not saying this is a good shoot. They're saying this is not a criminal violation of law. What across the country, when these cases do go, oftentimes the jury acquits over evidence that people can't understand. Why does that happen? Why do you think that happens? You know, realistically, there is in this country a support your local police. There is almost a presumption, and the jury has to assess it. And yet there are cases. We all know the South Carolina case where that man was, uh, officer was convicted of second degree. But those are so obvious. When it's a close call, Generally, people lean to the side of law enforcement because we're all taught support law enforcement. That's the trouble with what's going on in our community today, with Sacramento and everywhere else. We're losing the trust of our public by this, and that is a concern for everybody in law enforcement and society. Thank you for joining us this morning.